When a top-down shooter like Nex Machina comes along, I'm reminded that even in this age of procedural open worlds and emergent storytelling, you don't need a lot of buzzwords to have a good time. Its five stages of simple, fast, sometimes frantic bot blasting could be daunting to the unprepared. But when I got a good run going, the response of controls and exciting sci-fi art style made my frustrations with its sometimes nasty death penalty worth it. Each stage is divided up into rooms, where you have to defeat several waves of robotic enemies, optionally saving defenseless humans to increase your score before proceeding to the next. The baddies are both visually interesting and clever in their design, and every world introduces new ones so the combat never feels too repetitive. Saving the human hostages adds a sense of urgency and encourages you to take risks and get aggressive. All humans safe. As you progress through a level, you'll accumulate a set of power-ups. These include increasing your weapon spread, granting you a single-hit shield, and causing your dash attack, normally used only for speedy escapes, to deal explosive damage at the point of impact. Getting fully powered up is fun and rewarding, but it lacks variety since a maxed out character always has the same set of abilities and lends itself naturally to a sort of failure spiral that I wasn't especially fond of. When you die, usually after taking just one hit, you drop one power up and have to get back to the place you died to recover it. If you lose all your lives and are forced to use a continue, you lose all but one of your power ups. The difference between a full brace of power ups and none at all, especially on some of the end stage bosses, is absolutely night and day. More than once, this led me to have to restart an entire level because I died at or just before the boss. After having slogged through over a dozen extremely challenging rooms, I simply didn't have enough mobility or firepower to have the slightest chance of winning. Punishing failure by making your next attempt even harder doesn't make a lot of sense. Expect a lot of restarts to get that one perfect run, especially on higher difficulties. That said, those deaths themselves were never unfair thanks to the pixel-perfect controls, so I only had myself to be angry with for blowing a run, and I had a good time navigating Next Machina's array of challenges. The appealing art and energetic soundtrack made me look forward to whatever might come next. For more on retro style games, check out our reviews of Graceful Explosion Machine, Disney Afternoon Collection, and Shovel Knight Treasure Trove.